In this video, we're going to take a look at solving rational equations. Now, solving rational equations, there's a couple things we have to be concerned about. And one is if that we be sure to check our answers because many times what's going to happen is we're going to end up with things that are going to get us into trouble. And namely, things that get us into trouble are when we have a zero in the denominator. Since we've got, remember, a rational um, expression is when we have a variable in the denominator. So we can't have zero there. So we've got to be on the lookout for that. So be sure that you check your answers that you come up with. Then we're going to often use cross products in order to solve these situations. So let's take a look at this first one. Here, I can go ahead and just take cross products. So that's going to give me 6 times b, which is 6b. Then here's a key part. It's 4 times this whole thing. So this is going to be equal to 4 times, and I put it in parentheses, b plus 4, like so. Now, be very careful with that. That's probably the biggest error that I see is that people want to just put this 4b plus 4. Well, that would be 4 times b, but what about multiplying by the 4? That's a piece of this term as well. That's why we have to put it in parentheses. Okay, so then when I'm here, now it should be hopefully fairly familiar. On the left side here, we've still got 6b. Then I'm going to distribute that 4 through to get 4b plus 16. Then, got to get all my b's together, so I'm going to subtract 4b from both sides. I'm going to go up over here. So I have 6b minus 4b is 2b. Then, that's equal to 16. And finally, divide by 2, divide by 2, we get b equals 8. Now, just a quick check. Make sure that those are okay. Put in 8 here. 8 plus 4 would be 12. Can we have 12 in the bottom of a denominator? Sure and 8 over here so that's okay as well so that one works okay let's take a look at this one right here now this one we've got a situation where we're not going to be able to use cross products right away because we've got two different things here well hmm Remember that to add these things together, I had to have a common denominator. So as I look at this, is there anything that would be easier to get a common denominator than the other parts? Well, it looks like if I had these two together, I could have a common denominator of 2n, but they're not right now. How could I get this over with that one? Well, I could just subtract it. So I'm going to write that above here. I'm going to subtract 3 over n. And I'm going to subtract 3 over n. Okay, now how do I make that n into 2n? Multiply by 2 on the top and bottom. Remember, we're just creatively multiplying by 1 there. So as I multiply by the 2 over 2, that's just 1. Okay, so then on the left side, I have 2 over n plus 1. And that's going to be equal to, okay, so this here we have 9 over 2n and here we have negative 3 times 2 is minus 6 over 2n okay then gotta do a little clean up here so this is gonna be 2 over n plus 1 equals my common denominator is 2n and then 9 minus 6 is 3 okay so then we're finally at the point where we can do our cross products okay so that's gonna give me 2 times 2n which is 4n that's gonna be equal to 3 times this whole thing remember so 3 times n plus 1 okay then distribute that through so that gives me 4n equals 3n plus 3 then I gotta get that the variables all together so I'm gonna subtract 3n from both sides so minus 3n minus 3n so on this side I'm left with just n equals 3 okay let's check make sure that those are okay 
So we put 3 in for n. 3 plus 1 is 4. That's okay. Then we put 3 here. That would be 3 as a denominator. That's fine. And 2 times 3 is 6, which that as a denominator is fine as well. Okay? So that's that one. Then let's hop over here and see what's going on in this situation. Well, here we're going to just go ahead and do our cross products again. So my first one is going to be x times x minus 2. That's going to be equal to 3 times x plus 2. Okay. Now distribute those things through. So x times x is x squared. Then x times minus 2 is minus 2x. Then here we have 3 times x. So that would be 3x. And 3 times 2, which would be plus 6. Okay. Then I've got that x squared term. So that means it's a quadratic situation. And to solve a quadratic, my first method of choice is to try and factor. So in order to do that, no matter what method I use for solving the quadratics, basically I need to set it equal to zero. So I'm going to take all this stuff and bring it over here so we can combine and see if we can factor. So minus 3x and minus 6, minus 3x, minus 6, that's going to give me x squared minus 2x minus 3x is minus 5x and then minus 6 is equal to zero. Okay, then, can I factor that? Well, what am I looking for? Factors of 6 with a difference of 5. Well, 6 and 1. So, that's going to break up into two things. The signs are plus and minus because that's minus. It's the only way I can make that second term minus, or that third term minus, excuse me. Then, let's see, I want to end up with a minus 5x. So I've got to put the larger factor with the minus. So in this case, the 6 goes there, the 1 there. To get that x squared, we've got to have our x times x. Okay, then, I set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So x plus 1 equals 0, which is going to give us, subtract 1 on both sides, x equals negative 1, and finally, x minus 6 equals 0. So we add 6 on both sides. Oops. Add 6. And we are left with x equals 6. Okay. So then let's check our answers. So we've got that negative 1. Let's put that in here. And the concern we have is on the bottom. So negative 1 plus 2 is going to give me, well, that would be 1. You can have 1 in the denominator. That's fine. 1's okay over here. 6, 6 plus 2 would be 8. And 6, huh, that's fine too. So we're good to go there. So our both of our answers check, and off we go. Okay, then let's take a look at this last one over here. And in this one, again, we're going to start by taking those cross products. So we have 3 times x plus 3, and that's going to be equal to We've got two binomials being multiplied here. So it's x minus 2 times x plus 3, like so. Then we need to do some distribution. We'll FOIL that out. So we have, oh, wait a minute. Let's not work that hard. Notice what we have. We have an x plus 3 here and an x plus 3 here. What if I just divided by x plus 3? So if I divide by x plus 3, what am I going to be left with? Well, this is gone, and I just have 3 equals. On this side, this is gone, and I just have x minus 2. Huh, almost there. So I'm just going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides. Add 2, so we get 5 equals x. Then take those back, put them in. So 5 plus 3, we're good to go there. That's okay. Um, so not any problems in terms of getting values for x that aren't going to work. All right, solving radical <laughs> rational equations, what we want to do is use cross products. Sometimes we're going to have to find a common denominator and do some combining first. Other times we're just going to have to do our cross products. Then remember your foiling and your factoring and your distributing skills 
to both solve these and simplify. Hope this video was helpful in terms of your solving rational equations. Keep working hard.